say in closed session uh, that um, that Ms. Blair in court made a robust moral <coughs> commitment to not badmouth any council members or the um, uh, to badmouth council, fellow council members, city council, and that uh, the police and everything. And she and that lasted probably three days, I think. Uh, she has continued to disparage the council and city manager and the police department. Her podcasts are in the same vein. Last one was sponsored by her attorneys. She has threatened two recalls in June. She has called a member of council a whiny little bitch on Facebook. Her posts are still full of innuendo, no facts. Have her present the facts. And then check them out. And she's also threatened two recalls. I don't know if I said that first. Um, she will not change. And if you cave into her, God help us for the next one and a half years. And if part of your discussion is to settle with her, please make sure that her resignation is part of the settlement. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Hi, my name is Brian Custodio, uh, 1600 Enterprise Drive, 1200, 19th Avenue, Lee Moore Cabin, California. A um, couple things. I was discouraged the other day, three meetings back when the council entertained and suggested employment and verifications, I won't get specific, but it was blatantly out of line. Ms. Blair was part of it, but it was engaged. It should not be engaged. It should be in closed session. I've been around here since I don't know, few city managers. I've seen different people hire city managers, and I've seen different ones that actually fit and work. I disagree with how some of the council um, has thought about our city manager, and because you blatantly put it out there that he was the only one that didn't get a raise. I'd love to get him a lawyer. I think that's ridiculous. I don't know how you guys do that. And that engages all of you. So to be there, I mean, you should be advising very abruptly to stop. Defamation of character from a bench is not a good situation. Legal words mean things. You know it better than most. You're supposed to be advising them, stopping them at that point. Sir, address the council. Your legal person needs to advise you better. Thank you. Your city manager, from what I see, and I'm a big business, is doing a good job. Let me repeat that. We're big business. No games. He's doing a good job. The last one came in for resume support. I think, Eddie, you voted for her. If I'm not, Dave, you probably voted for her. And Holly probably voted for her, and Ray voted for her. I don't even know her name. But she's the one who started the fire department, BS. So now you got somebody that's homegrown, wants to do something good. I know how I treat people who do something good in my place. I know exactly how I treat them. I don't treat them like you did. No way. No way. Someone that wants to go out there and fight for you, you're going to tell them, hey, I'm not really thinking you did a good job because I don't want to stir. No, 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 no. That's all back there. And if the attorney for you guys can't get that straight, you fire them. We thank you for your kind words. Have a blessed day. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. We're going to be going into uh, closed session. The items have been set aside for the council to, 
to meet in closed session to discuss matters pursuant government code section 54956.94. The mayor will provide an oral report regarding the closed session at the end of the meeting. Conference with litigations, existing litigations government code section 54956.91, City of Lamore versus Holly Andrea Blair, case number 19C slash 0043. New business section one. Okay. We're going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting, go into closed session. City Council, we came out of closed session and I'm going to turn it over to our city attorney. Um, on a motion from, so I want to let public know, um, I'm going to read the motion and the action that was taken in closed session. There are copies of the settlement agreement that are over here um, and I am going to read it in full for those who are on Facebook Live. Uh, on a motion uh, to approve the settlement agreement in the case of City of Lamore versus Holly Blair. Uh, motion made by Council Member Lyons, seconded by Council Member Brown on a unanimous vote. Uh, I shouldn't say unanimous, excuse me. Approval by Council Members uh, Billingsley, Brown, Lyons, and uh, Mayor Neal. <coughs> um, I will now read uh, the agreement for the public. <coughs> Uh, compromise and Release Agreement, City of Lamore versus Holly Andrade Blair, Kings County Superior Court, case number 19C0043. The Compromise and Release Agreement here and after agreement is made by and between the City of Lamore, City or Petitioner, and Holly Andrade Blair, Respondent, referred to collectively as the parties or, or individually as party. To resolve all claims, issues, and disputes in the City of Lamore versus Holly Andrade Blair, Kings County Superior Court, case number 14C0043, the action. Whereas, recitals, whereas respondent has elected to serve as a member of the city, was elected to serve as a member of the City of Lamore City Council on November 8th, 2016, and was sworn into office on December 6, 2016. Whereas, state law, the Lamore Municipal Code, the code, and the Lamore Council Rules of Procedure, the rules, provide certain administrative and procedural due process protections and confidential treatment related to complaints and adverse comments about city employees or bona fide volunteers. Whereas, respondent has made repeated public statements directed at the job performance of certain city employees or bona fide volunteers. Whereas, as a result of such public comments, two public safety officers did file four internal complaints regarding respondent's conduct, alleging that respondent's conduct threatens to undermine their credibility, standing in the community, ability to perform as public safety officers, and effectiveness in a supporting criminal prosecutions in their detriment, to their detriment. Respondent denies those assertions. <coughs> Whereas on August 21st, 2018, the City of Lamore approved and adopted resolution number 2018-42, censoring respondent for, among other things, discussing private personnel matters publicly, failing to direct her concerns and complaints related to city staff to the city manager, and making unsupported public allegations of dishonesty about city employees, the censure. Respondent denies these allegations, assertions. Whereas on November 2nd, 2018, the city sent respondent a cease and desist letter requesting respondent, among other things, cease and desist making public comments that infringe or could infringe upon the rights of city employees. Whereas despite the censor and the city's request that she cease and desist, respondents stated on several occasions that she would not stop making such public comments and in fact did not stop. Whereas on March 18, 2019, respondent filed an anti-slap special motion to strike the petition, the anti-slap, triggering additional pleadings, legal argument before the court and the expenditure of additional fees and costs. And whereas the parties now wish to resolve all claims, issues and disputes related to the action and all motions related thereto, including but not limited to the anti-slap. The parties desire to protect the privacy rights of city employees or volunteers, as well as the First Amendment, and protect employee, city employees' due process rights and to protect the city liability. 
Now, therefore, in consideration of the mutual promises and covenants herein, and for the good and valuable consideration, the parties have agreed to resolve this action, or the action, without any admission of liability or wrongdoing, and agree as follows. Terms and conditions. Paragraph 1, recitals. The statements and recitals said above are incorporated herein by reference. Paragraph 2, public comment. Respondent agrees to refrain from publicly making or adopting any negative comments about individual city employees or volunteers, including the city manager, whether by name, rank, or other identifying information from which one could infer their identity. Respondent further agrees to direct any and all comments regarding individual city employees or volunteers to the city manager or his or her designee consistent with state law, the code, and the rules. For the city manager, respondent shall address any concerns in a properly agendized closed session under city manager evaluation. Respondent shall remain free to criticize the city council, city departments, or the city government as a whole, consistent with the First Amendment, state law, the code, and the rules. Paragraph 3, release payment. Petitioner agrees to pay respondent's attorney's fees and costs in this matter in the amount of $38,000 in three payments as follows. $11,000 within 30 days following final execution of this agreement, $11,000 by July 30th, 2019, and $16,000 by July 30th, 2020. The payment will be made in the form of a check or warrant made out to the law firm of Mello and Sarsfield, LLP, and shall be delivered to the firm at their business address in Visalia, California. This payment is not an admission of liability or agreement that any fees are owed either under or the current litigation or as a result of the respondent's anti-slap motion. Paragraph 4, the censure. In the event respondent agrees to conform her behavior by signing this agreement, consistent with paragraph 2 above immediately following the adoption of this agreement, petitioner agrees to forthwith relieve respondent of the restrictions set forth in the censure and to allow respondent to serve on committees and boards in her capacity as a city council member and to represent the city and this council at a public function in her official capacity on the same terms and conditions as other city council members. Paragraph 5, Enforcement. Any violation of this agreement will give rise to penalties for each violation in the amount of $1,000 to be paid by the party who has committed the violation to the other party. In the event litigation becomes necessary to enforce this agreement, including but not limited to this enforcement provision, the prevailing party in the litigation will also be entitled to recovery of all reasonable attorney's fees and costs associated with such litigation and enforcement efforts. Paragraph 6, Continuing Jurisdiction and Dismissal. The court shall adopt this agreement and retain jurisdiction over the action and this agreement until December 31, 2020, the end of respondent's current term, or the end of her second term following re-election, whichever occurs later. At the end of respondent's service as a council member for the city of Lemoore, petitioner will file a request for dismissal of the action with prejudice. Petitioner will provide respondent notice by way of file stamp copy of petitioner's request for dismissal sent via email and regular U.S. mail to the respondent's attorneys on the same day is filed with the court. The parties understand and agree that as a consequence of petitioner's filing of the request for dismissal, the action will become closed. The parties agree and waive any and all objections to the court monitoring the social media presence or sites of all council members for the City of Lemoore and the City of Lemoore social media presence or sites to ensure the compliance with this agreement. Upon execution of this agreement by both parties, respondent will dismiss with prejudice the anti-slap motion filed in the present case. Respondent will provide petitioner notice by way of file stamp copy of respondent's request for dismissal sent via email and regular U.S. mail to the petitioner's attorneys on the same day is filed with the court. Paragraph 7, ratification by the City Council and effective date. This agreement shall be executed by the parties and adopted by the court as in indicated below. This agreement shall become binding and effective only upon the execution by both parties and upon ratification by the City Council. Paragraph 8, no admission of liability. It is understood and agreed that this agreement is compromise of disputed claims and that nothing in this agreement shall be construed as an admission of liability by any party. Paragraph 9. Release of claims. The parties mutually agree and accept said terms and conditions as set forth in this agreement, including the payment set forth in paragraph 3 herein, in full settlement and compromise of the above entitled matters described as the action 
and agree that shall same shall fully and forever discharge and release all claims and causes of action or appeal rights, whether known or unknown, or now known, unknown, which either party has or might have or could have asserted against the other party, its officials, employees, representatives, or agents in the action arising out of the incidents, pleadings, and our anti-slap special motion to strike, which are the subject thereof, including rest restitution, disgorgement, damages, incentives, or enhancement award, attorney's fees and costs. Paragraph 10, Civil Code Section 1542. This agreement includes an express waiver by the parties of Civil Code Section 1542, which states, a general release does not extend to the claims that a creditor or releasing party does not know or suspect to exist in his or her favor at the time of executing the release, and if known by him or her, would have materially affected his or her settlement with the debtor or release party. Therefore, the parties expressly acknowledge that this release is intended to include in its effect without limitation all claims and causes of action that they do not do not know or suspect to exist in their favor, favor and that this release contemplates an ex and the extinguishment of all such claims and causes of action. Paragraph 11, Joint Statement. The parties agree to issue the joint statement attached hereto as Exhibit A, following execution of this agreement and approval of the court. No other comments regarding the litigation shall be made except as required by law, including but not limited to court orders, the California Public Records Act, Government Code Section 6250 etc., to enforce this agreement or to defend against any lawsuit filed against the parties jointly or individually. Paragraph 12, representation by counsel. Each of the parties acknowledges and agrees that they have been represented by independent legal counsel of their own choice throughout the negotiation of this agreement and that they are executing this agreement having had sufficient opportunity to investigate the facts and obtain advice of such counsel. Paragraph 13, voluntary agreement. Each party affirms and acknowledges that she, it, has read, fully appreciates, and understands the words, terms, and provisions of this agreement, is entirely satisfied with the settlement described, and has duly executed this agreement voluntarily and of her, its free will and accord. Each party had an opportunity to review and consult with their representative legal counsel on this matter. Paragraph 14, entire agreement. This agreement constitutes the entire agreement between the petitioner and respondent. No other promises, agreements, or statements between the parties shall be binding unless made in writing and signed by all parties hereto. Paragraph 15, Amendments. This agreement cannot be changed or supplemented orally and may be modified or superseded only by written instrument executed by all parties. Paragraph 16, Interpretation. Each of the party acknowledges and agrees that this agreement is to be construed as a whole according to its fair meaning and not in favor of nor against any of the parties as draftmen or otherwise. Paragraph 17. Other documents. The parties agree to execute all such other documents and to take all such other action as may be reasonably necessary to effectuate the purpose of this agreement. Paragraph 18. Choice of law. This agreement shall be governed by and interpreted under the laws of California, applicable to instruments, persons, transaction, and subject matter which have legal contacts and relationships exclusively within the state of California. Paragraph 19, severability. In any provision of this agreement is held to be invalid, void, or unenforceable, the remaining provisions of the agreement shall remain in full force and effect. Paragraph 20. Warranty of authority. Each of the persons signing this agreement represents and warrants that such person has been duly authorized to sign this agreement on behalf of the party indicated, and that each of the parties by signing this agreement warrants and represents that such party is legally authorized and entitled to enter into this agreement. Paragraph 21, binding effect. This agreement is for the benefit of and shall be the binding of all parties and their successors, assigns, heirs, executors, administrators, predecessors, partnerships, employees, attorneys, insurers, sureties, agents, representatives, directors, officers, receivers, trustees, and or stockholders. Paragraph 22, execution and counterparts. This agreement may be executed in several counterparts and subject to the requirements of paragraph eight herein shall be deemed legally effective at such time as counterparts thereof duly executed on behalf of all parties have been furnished and delivered to the attorneys for all the parties of, to this agreement. Signed copies and facsimile versions of this agreement shall have the same force and effect 
as signatures of the original. It is witness thereof the parties hereto have executed this agreement as dated below. City of Lamore petitioner, City Holly Andrade Blair respondent, adopted by the court, Judge Kathy Caffini, Kings County Superior Court. Exhibit A. The City of Lamore continues to serve the interests of all residents and employees. These commitments are front and center in the decision to reach a settlement agreement in this case of City of Lamore versus Holly Andrade Blair. As leaders who serve with the trust of Lamore residents, we have made this agreement to provide greater protection for our employees, balanced against the free speech rights of all residents. Additionally, this agreement relieves the city of future litigation costs and expenses and aims to create a more positive and lasting impact to our city. Today's decision was also impacted by the fact that we take our fiduciary role very seriously. We believe our residents have a right to know how city resources have been used, and it is imperative to inform our residents of costs related to legal action in matters related to this case. The settlement agreement is a public document and, and the particular terms can be viewed in the agreement. However, in the spirit of transparency, including the cost of settlement, which none of the monies will be paid to Councilmember Blair, the city has spent nearly $100,000 litigating this case. We are confident that this direction will allow the city of Lamar to move forward in an effort to protect and serve our residents and bring about continuity with the council, city employees, and all residents of Lamar. Thank you. Okay, we're going on to new businesses discussing and actions proposed resolutions 2019 15A resolution of the council, the city council of the Lemoore, city of Lemoore regarding re restrictions placed in council members Holly Andrea Blair. Copies of the resolution have been provided to council this morning and are available at the clerk's office. Does council wish me to read the resolution before you discuss it and send it to the public? Yeah. A resolution of the city of Lamar of the of the city council of the city of Lamar regarding restrictions placed on council member Holly Andrade Blair. Whereas the city council of the city of Lamar adopted resolution 2018-42 on August 21st, 2018 publicly censuring Councilmember Blair and removing Councilmember Blair from any committee or board she sits on in her capacity as a council member and banned her from representing the city and the council at a public functions in her official capacity. Whereas the City Council of the City of Lamore has agreed to remove this restriction placed on Councilmember Blair and Councilmember Blair will be allowed to once again sit on committees or boards in her capacity as a council member and to represent the city and the council at public functions in her official capacity as approved by the council majority. Now therefore, the city council hereby determines that council member Blair will be allowed to once again to sit on committees or boards in her capacity as a council member and to represent the city and the council at public functions in her official capacity as approved by the council majority. This resolution shall be effective immediately after its passage and approval. The city clerk certification, the city clerk shall certify the passage and adoption of this resolution and enter into the book of the original resolution, assuming council votes to pass the resolution. So it's open for council discussion. If there's no discussion, I'm gonna open it to the public. I was poignant, I didn't know how poignant. Your advice, some of the matters that have led to this resolution has been lacking. Advice from professional people that are, you're paying both sides of the matter now. But advice in front of situations. Time taken, spent with attorneys to understand the profound ramifications 
of all this, which none of you really did, except for the attorneys. The most profitable thing out of the whole situation, the attorneys. Your resolution didn't matter, nothing mattered. It was one vote. So as resolutions go and you think about this resolution, remember, you're just voting. You're voting your vote. And I would hope that in the future, you don't have to worry about one vote. That most of us in business don't care about that vote. There's no way that that vote can be positive for the city and the people of the city. So let them spew, let them do whatever and support your employees. Your employees will take care of themselves because as you just found out, their legal bills will be paid, which should have been advice that your attorney might have given you. If that such employee chooses to sue any of you directly. I don't know how you weren't provided with some of this advice. I'm not an attorney and I'm probably talking not I think I'm pretty straight. I would have definitely looked at my cost expenditures over the ramification, ramifications of going through all this, okay? And realized that we aren't the federal government who prints our own money. So we've got a little situation here with our budget. So that's where the money comes in. And attorneys aren't cheap. There's no way. They're very expensive. And if you feel this doesn't have to do with the resolution, you're dead wrong. Your attorney led you to the resolution. So that's the correlation. So if the attorney gives you the correlation to this resolution, how involved is she? She can't tell me to be quiet. Maybe the mayor can. But I'm telling you guys, this, this should have never came out. You guys shouldn't have blah, blah, blah. As in due respect, it may not go to Mrs. Ms. Blair, but how do you know that? Did the attorneys agree to, dis to give you discovery that would show you where the money went? In other words, reimbursement for her time that she was out that you don't know about. But that's just another thought. Did you ask a question? Okay. Did, the, did your attorney ask that question? All those different things. So I really appreciate it. we appreciate your comment. You've been over four or five minutes. I gave you grace. Okay. I don't need grace. Okay. I just well, need thank to know you, the time limit have a, and have your time. meetings thank at you. seven. I thank won't you. show up. We appreciate it. I like it at twelve right. where I can talk. Well, thank you. All right, have a blessed day. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will. But thank I'm gonna you. keep talking. I, this All right, I'm gonna thank say you. it again. Can you please? Okay. No, well, I'm not. Um, thank you. There's no time limit on this. There is it's, no. Hey, it is a time limit. It's a three minute time limit. If you don't have nothing to do, go look it up. Um, thank you, sir. Can you please go sit down? Can you wrap it up? Yes, I, would, I will wrap it up. I don't like what's going on. If you don't get it, I we don't hear. like it. We, I, well, no, you don't trying to shut me up. I don't like it. You guys got in a mess. You get it. Now it's costing all of us money. Whose money? Ours. Taxable income. Who provides taxes? Sales tax. Who's your biggest sales tax provider, Eddie? I'll that's leave Mr. it at that. That's the mayor, not Eddie. That's the and mayor. You know what? But I'm just going to say this. Hold on just a minute. Let me say this. I, I've been knowing you for a while. Yeah, I'm uh, mad. We, I understand you've been mad, and you have every right to voice your opinion. Um, I'm not going to never disrespect you. I, I, I respect you. Um, but can you please, uh, I was just saying, put it, this herb and wrap it up. I wasn't trying to disrespect you, okay, sir? Okay. All I, right. I understand that, Mayor. Okay. I do understand that. But I don't like what's going on. And, uh, I, and I had the opportunity to talk to you about this resolution that was created by a plethora of things, right? right? And so, such as Legal Beagle, I get to discuss it with you because it's part of discussion. Okay. Okay? I, really I think you should vote no on the resolution. 
Okay. And I think you should take it back and fight it all the way to the court and find new legal counsel, is my opinion, and get a second opinion. Okay? okay. But I don't know if you've thought that far, okay, other okay. than just paying the bill. So those are the type of things when you get in business, you learn because you got to pay it out of your pocket. What I'm saying is it's not money you're spending out of your own pocket, so you have a different attitude. Think of it out of our pockets or your own pockets, you may have a different attitude. Even Mrs. Blair may have a different attitude because it all got kind of bubbled up and boiled over. Mm -hmm. Everybody can sling shots. It's not real hard. No, it's not, sir. No. So if everybody can get back to, hey, we want to do good for Lamore, hey, we want to get some things done in Lamore, that'd be a good positive step. Mm -hmm. But agreeing to some of the things that I just listened to, um, jeopardizes that effect and I'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time for the discussion. Thank you. Hi, Susie Benuelos, uh, Cedar Lane resident. Um, it was a lot to take in. I'm, sounds like to me this is pretty much a done deal. You've got the agreement and the resolution already typed out, but I would just like to register my extreme dislike for this resolution and as a constituent of Mr. Stewart Lyons I would implore you to please vote no. Um, for one thing I just want to remind you all that when the censure was put in place it was for a lot of very unbecoming a council member and a, just a good human being behavior and then in the subsequent um, time afterwards, the false allegation was made that a certain council member was removed for being the only female or the only Latina or whatever, and that was not the case, and we all know that. So just please remember that, that so many malicious and false allegations were made regarding that, and I get that you guys are trying to save the tax members, taxpayers' money, but I don't think that kowtowing to the lies and the manipulation and the false uh, characterizations of all of you, of all of us, of our police chief, of our city manager, of all of us is necessarily the way to go. We're paying her legal fees to slander and badmouth all of us and wreck our, our town's reputation. And I think I speak for the majority of us in here that we are really just flabbergasted and shocked that we would agree to pretty much give her everything she wants. So that says to the next person and the next person and the next person that you can malign and slander and just attack every person that you don't agree with for whatever reason and then we'll pay your legal bills and give you everything you want. And that's kind of what it sounded like to me, but um, I'm not the most educated here. I am not a legal mind, and it was a, a lot to take in, but I absolutely really do not want her censure removed at a minimum, um, but I think it's all a horrible, horrible idea. Young lady, I, I, I do have something to say. I just have a comment for you. Um, we are bound. We're, we're only allowed to refer to this. We're not allowed to really comment on it. I would ask you, read that thing carefully. I will read it again. That's why I got it. And if you read it carefully, I think you can answer some of your own questions. I will do that. Thank you. Um, Connie Walashen, I want to tell you that I'm so disappointed in this, this settlement. So. I, I, I have no words about how disappointed I am. And Ms. Blair sitting there smirking is really something. But she has already been, when Mr. Uh, Custodia was speaking, she interjected when he called Mr. Neal, Eddie, she interjected that he's the mayor. Well, that's not Ms. Blair's place to say that. That was Mr. Neal's place to correct him, not hers, and so she's already starting again. And I know what this resolution was to allow her to sit on committees that she has been removed from. 
So I know that there was a lot of committees that she was removed on, or re removed from, and that you guys all have to take over. Is this, you want her to start taking your place? Because in, she's going to be a representative of the city of Lemoore on all of these commissions. Is that what you want? I would, uh, I would implore you to vote no on this resolution because I am really upset with the, the fact that you're going to give her so much money. Thank you. Ms. Walshen? Yes. I would ask you to take that resolution that we uh, have right here, right. read it carefully. Okay. All right. Maybe sh should we get time to read it? Or yeah, you can, you can have them. There's, a, there's some over there at the desk. Any other public comments? Seeing there's none, I'm going to bring it back to the council. Any comments from the council? I do want to make one comment. I know, just real quick. I just want to again clarify what again was already read. None of the monies are going to me personally. And yes, this is a government entity. We're a city entity. You can trace all of the monies, your taxpayer monies, you can trace where it goes to. So I just, again, want to reiterate, none of that money goes to me. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Brown? Oh, I have nothing to say. Mr. Lyons? Yeah, I, I think I just want to tell everybody, read it carefully. Mr. Lindsay. Yeah. Well, I want to say something. I think I did quite well to be, well, some folks might think I, I, I have a temper. I've been known to have a temper or other than that, but I, 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 I kept my composure. And um, following the city attorney, I see how she keeps her composure. I don't know how she does it, but I guess it's by the grace of God. And I, I'm going to tell you, uh, Lamore's not 7,000 or more. I'm just letting you guys all know. I was born and raised here. And um, it's not seven. Just, you just swallow it. It's, it's going to happen. Lamore's growing. It's almost 30,000. And my constituents know we got to get out the box, and I think we are. So. I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to get somebody to make this motion on the council to approve the resolution. Well, I'll make a motion to approve this item. I'll second. Got a motion by me. I'll second. The mayor and a second by Holly. Aye. Vote aye. Aye. Anyone else? Mr. Lyons? Mr. Billsley? You got a vote. Mr. Lyons. Ms. Lyons, you want to make a vote? Regretfully, aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Billingsley? No. Okay. And I vote aye. Motion carries. The time is now 120. Adjourn.